Hi, my name is Chris, and I live in Portland, Oregon. And this November, we Portlanders are going to be voting on a really big change to our city government. Part of that change involves how we choose who represents us on city council. What's on the table is something called proportional representation, and it's new to a lot of us, so I thought I would try to explain it. But first, a couple of notes. Number one, this video is going to be about five minutes long, so you can watch it on a break while you're having a snack. Number two, I'm going to use the words diversity and minority in this video, and I want to make it clear that when I do, I'm not necessarily referring to racial or ethnic diversity or minorities. Uh, it could refer to that, but it could also refer to diversity of income and wealth or ideological diversity, you know, political minorities or diversity of age, education, transportation, size of household, all sorts of things that make us different from our neighbors. And number three, uh, this video is not being made by any campaign either for or against this proposal. I'm making it myself because for some reason, the idea of proportional representation is just not being explained very well. The term proportional representation is barely being used in this conversation and it's very frustrating. So I just wanted to help clear it up a bit. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends and family, especially if they live in Portland, because I think it's really important that everybody understand exactly what we're voting on. Okay, let's get started. This is Portland. We've got the Willamette, we got Mount Tabor, we've got Big Pink, but most importantly, hey, sorry to butt in, I just wanted to point out that I know that Portland is not split in half by the river. In fact, 80% of Portland's population is east of the river and about 30% of it is east of Mount Tabor. So just know that this is not a geographically accurate representation of the city. Okay, back to the video. We've got the Willamette, we've got Mount Tabor, we've got Big Pink, but most importantly, we've got a bunch of Portlanders. There are lots of different kinds of Portlanders, but for the purposes of today, we've got four kinds. We've got blue, green, yellow, and red, portrayed here by some colorful candy-coated chocolates. The voters in Portland currently elect five members of our city council, the mayor and four commissioners, and we elect each of them in a separate citywide election. So the mayor is elected by whichever group of voters is the biggest. Looks like we're getting a blue mayor. Then commissioner number one is elected. Again, a citywide election. So blues elect commissioner number one. And that happens three more times. Another blue, another blue, and another blue. And what can happen is you can get a city council that's not as diverse as the rest of the city. Of course, it's not the case that the same 51% of Portland voters elect all five members of the city council. But it is true that they could, and that each city council member is only elected by, at minimum, 51% of voters, which means 49% of voters could be unrepresented on council. So how could we change things? Well, one thing we could try to do is split the city into districts. There's a proposal to split it into seven districts. So here are seven districts, and each district elects one city councilor. Well, that's great. This district elects a blue. This one elects a blue. These two elect blues. And then we get a green and a yellow and a red. That's great. This is a nice, diverse council. The problem is, this is not what Portland looks like. This is what our city looks like. A lot of our diversity is relatively mixed up. And when that happens, the majority in the city is likely to be the same as a majority in a district, which means you end up getting blue, 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 and blue. And that is not a particularly diverse city council. So what else can we try? Well, let's try this. Four larger districts that each elect three city councilors. But let's also use something called proportional representation, which is where you use a voting method that tries to pick the three candidates that best represent the most voters in a district as opposed to the three candidates that the majority of voters in the district want. Side note, there are actually a bunch of different proportional voting methods. The one that's being proposed is called single transferable vote. 
But that's not what this video is about. It's not about how that method works or how votes are tallied. It's just about the concept of proportional representation. So if you want to learn about how the votes would be counted, there are lots of great videos out there. There are probably some in the comments of wherever you found this video. Anyway, with proportional representation, we will elect three representatives from each district, and we'll do it in such a way to try to make the most voters in each district happy. So each district will likely elect a blue. That's fine. Blues are the majority of the city. But then this district might elect a green and a red. This district, a green and a yellow, perhaps. This one maybe elects another blue and a green. And this one, a yellow and a red. And there's our new city council. That's how proportional representation works. And it's part of Measure 26228 that Portlanders will be voting on this November. Now, there are a lot of other big changes in that measure, but in my opinion, this one is the biggest, and it's definitely the most controversial. So if you like what it does, you should vote for the measure. If you don't like what it does, vote against it. Either way, if this video helped you understand how proportional representation works, please share it. I worked really hard on it, and I spent $70 on eight pounds of candy that I have now touched and can't give away.